Welcome to episode 3 of the screencast series on getting started with the PHP wrappers for Kenda UI. In the first two episodes, I showed you how to set up the basic structure for working with the PHP wrappers, walked through some of the code to generate the Kenda UI controls, and showed how to connect it all to a server API. In this episode, then, I'm going to look a little deeper at customizing one of the core Kendo UI components, the grid. I'll show you how to get the basic grid configured with columns that come from the API data, how to create custom column templates from a nested object in the data, how to set up add, edit, and delete functionality for the grid, and how to mix the PHP with a little bit of custom JavaScript to create a custom editor for the records that we'll be working with. Now, if you haven't watched the previous episodes yet, and you're new to the PHP wrappers, I'd suggest going back and watching those first. I'll be moving pretty quickly in this episode and only showing code that's new, different, or relevant to the task at hand. You'll need to have a pretty good understanding of the project structure and the required PHP calls to set up the Kenda UI wrappers in this episode. The first thing that I need to set up is a data source that connects to my API. In this case, the API has four different endpoints, one for create, read, update, and destroy. I'll build out my data source transport fairly quickly here, with the request type set to post and the content type set to application slash JSON in all cases. The API is located in the slash API slash products folder with a create, read, update, and destroy.php file for each endpoint. Once I have those in place, I can assign the methods to the data source transport. Next up, I want to create a data source schema to tell my data source what the data looks like. I'll start with the data source schema model and set up all of the fields that I'll be displaying and editing. Each of the fields will be told what type of data it is, string or number or date or otherwise and you can find a complete listing of the field types in the documentation at docs.kendoui.com. There are two data fields that don't use a standard data type, though, supplier and category. For now, I'm just going to leave those type attributes off of these fields. I'll come back to these later once I get to the point where I want to add and edit records in the grid. Next, I'll tell the model what field it uses for an ID. Then I'll add the fields to the model. The model gets assigned to the data source schema, and the schema gets assigned to the data source. Before I move on to the grid, though, there are a few other details that I need to get into the schema and data source. I know that I want to use server-side paging because of the amount of data in my database. It's easy to turn on paging, though. Just set the page size of the data source and tell it to use server paging in this case. The API returns data to me with the data wrapped in some metadata, that is, data that describes the response. This metadata is used by the data source and the grid to tell me how many total records there are, and that's used to calculate how many pages there are in the grid. The wrapper data also includes a reference to the actual data used for display and editing, of course, and I need to account for all of this in the configuration. In my case, the API returns an object that has two key fields in it, data and total. The total field tells the data source and grid how many total records there are in the query results, while the data field gives me the actual data to display for the current page and page size. With that in mind, I've set the schema's data and total properties, telling the data source how to handle the results of the API properly. There are still a few more details that need to be covered for the data source configuration, but I'll come back to these when I need them. For now, I'll move on to the grid and get some data displayed on the screen. Getting a grid in place is as easy as any other control. Create the grid instance and echo the render result to the screen. Getting the grid to do something more useful, though, we'll need a little more configuration. In this case, the columns I want to display include product name, supplier name, category name, unit price, and units in stock. And for the most part, getting these displayed is as simple as adding a new grid column instance, telling it what field to use from the dataset, 
and giving the column a name. Once I have the columns defined, I can add them to my grid. And after I have assigned the data source to the grid and tell the grid that it is pageable, I start to see something more useful, although it's not quite what I had in mind. I set things up so that there should only be five records per page, but scrolling down, I can see that there's obviously a lot more than five records. In fact, I'm showing the entire 80 record data set at this point. Although if I do scroll to the bottom, I can see that I have the correct number of pages listed. The problem is that the data source is telling my server how to do paging using a format that my server doesn't recognize. My server expects to have all of the request parameters passed to it as a JSON document. And if I look at the network tab and examine the read request, I can see that it's being passed back as a standard form post instead. To fix this, I need to change the transport and tell it to serialize everything as JSON instead of the standard form encoding. I can do that by setting a parameter map and pointing it to a JavaScript function that converts all of the data into JSON for me. Once I have that in place, reloading the screen shows the correct number of records on the screen. And if I examine the network tab again, I can see that the read request is being made with a JSON document instead of a standard form encoding. I still haven't shown all of the columns that I want though. I've left off the supplier name and category name because these are not flat fields with single values like everything else. If I look at a sample record returned from the API, I can see that supplier and category are nested objects with their own set of fields. To get these to display properly, I need to configure the grid column a little differently. The category column will get a category field and title, but I'm also going to add a custom template to display the value from category.categoryName. The result is the category name showing up in the grid the way I want. I also want to do a little more formatting of the unit price column. I'm going to call the format function and tell it to format the value as currency. The result is the unit price being displayed in dollars and cents instead of just a decimal. Next up, I'll add the ability to delete a record from the product listing. To do this, I'm going to add another grid column that will contain a grid column command item. The command item will have a name of destroy, which is recognized by the Kendo UI grid, and it turns this into a delete button for me. In order for this button to work though, I need to set the grid's editable attribute to true. Now I can click the delete button and it gives me the confirmation dialog to let me either confirm or cancel the delete. Clicking OK deletes the item and is removed from the grid. Editing a row is almost as easy. I'll add another command item to the same column as the destroy command to get the edit button up and running. Once again, the grid recognizes the edit name and it handles it for me. I'm also going to change the editable setting to the string popup. This tells the grid to use a popup window for editing instead of inline editing directly in the grid. Now when I click the edit button, I get a mostly functional editor window. Everything except for the supplier and category fields look pretty good. And if I didn't have any special considerations for these two fields, I'd call this done. But I need to fix this, of course. And it all goes back to the supplier and category fields being nested objects and not simple flat data. To handle this then, I'll build a custom editor for each of them.
At this point, I'm going to step out of the PHP for a moment and show how easy it is to make the leap from PHP to JavaScript and back. I want to build a dropdown list for the supplier and category editors, and I want to have that dropdown list load data from my server API. Now, rather than walk through the entire configuration of a dropdown list at this point, I'm just going to paste in the two JavaScript functions that I need. With these two functions in place, I need to reference them as the editor setting in the supplier and category columns of the grid. And I can do that by setting the editor attribute to the name of the JavaScript function. The grid uses this name to find the functions and calls them when needed. When I refresh the browser and click the edit button for one of the records now, I see the drop-down list that I need for both the supplier and the category. The last thing I need to do is add new products, and I want an add button to do this. I won't be adding another command to the last column though, since I don't want an add button on every row. Instead, I'll create a grid toolbar item with the name of create. Then I'll add this object as a toolbar item instead of a column. The grid recognizes the create name again and adds the right button to the grid for me. When I click the add new record button, I get the same form as editing, only I don't have any values in the product name, category, or supplier fields. When I fill in the information and click update though, well, nothing happens. It turns out my API is not getting all of the information that it needs, and I haven't put any real error handling in here to show that there was a problem on the server. The API expects supplier and category to be nested objects the same way it returns data to the page. But when creating a new record, the supplier and category fields don't exist yet. When the dropdown list for the supplier and category are changed, it attempts to bind the selected name and ID to a non existent field, and the field remains undefined. To fix this, I need to set the default value of the supplier and category fields to an empty JavaScript object. Of course, I'm using PHP to do this, so I need a way to tell the PHP code to use an empty JavaScript object. It turns out this is easy. As I showed in the first episode of this series, the PHP wrappers will serialize PHP objects into JavaScript objects for me. I can set the default value of the supplier field and category field to empty PHP object instances, and when this gets processed, the PHP objects will be turned into empty JavaScript objects. Now when I reload the page, add a new product, and set the supplier and category, everything is set and saved correctly. This means I now have a fully functional grid where I can add new products, make changes to it, and delete it when I'm done with it. I hope you've enjoyed the series on the PHP wrappers for Kindle UI's web controls. While I haven't covered every last aspect of every control, I've gone through all of the core concepts that you'll need to get up and running to create Kindle UI controls with PHP code, connect them to a data source, and integrate them with custom JavaScript and other configuration to produce the desired results. For more information on the PHP wrappers, or Kendo UI in general, be sure to check out KendoUI.com where you'll find links to the server wrappers, documentation, and demos for all of the controls, and more.